Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Love and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We confess. We have not welcomed the stranger. We confess. We have not loved our neighbor. We confess. We have not been Christ to one another. We confess. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven. You are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This lament comes from a people who have had their hopes shattered. The visions of a rebuilt Jerusalem and a renewed people of God, spoken of in Isaiah 40 through 55, have not been realized. Instead, the people experience ruin, conflict, and famine. This lament calls God to account, to be the God who has brought deliverance in the past. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 64, beginning at the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like the one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember our iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears, you have given them bowls of tears to drink. 
You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. As the Christians in Corinth await the advent of Jesus, Paul reminds them how the Lord has already enriched them through spiritual gifts and will continue to strengthen them until the coming day of the Lord. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, beginning at the third verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches, branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will not pass, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and put his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Several centuries ago, a Japanese emperor commissioned an artist to paint a bird. A number of months passed, then several years, and still no painting was brought to the palace. Finally, the emperor became so exasperated that he went to the artist's home to demand an explanation. Instead of making excuses, the artist placed a blank canvas on the easel. In less than an hour, he completed a painting that was to become a brilliant masterpiece. When the emperor asked the reason for the delay, the artist showed him armloads of drawings of feathers, wings, heads, and feet. 
Then he explained that all of this research and study had been necessary before he could complete the painting. Today's Gospel text tells us and the world about Jesus' warning warning his disciples to be properly prepared. Could they have lived their lives without being properly prepared for Jesus' return? Probably. But they are encouraged to get ready. Jesus likens it to a man going on a journey, so he leaves his slaves in charge, and they place a watchman to wait for the master's return. They don't know when it's going to happen, and so there always must be a watchman waiting at the door. And that's where the story ends, with the waiting. It is the same place that the Gospel of Mark ends. The writer of Mark's account of Holy Week goes through the entire crucifixion and placing Jesus' body in the tomb, and then stops writing. He leaves the reader, the disciples, everyone, in this moment of suspense. It isn't until the end of the other Gospels that we read about Jesus' resurrection. Mark leaves everyone in a moment of waiting. In all this waiting, Jesus warns the disciples and us that we are supposed to keep alert. No one knows when the Master will return, when everything will end. But it will happen, and Jesus warns us it will happen soon. It is only after he talks about the signs of the end of the world that he claims this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Does that mean the generation he is talking to, or the generation who first sees these signs, will witness all of them? And so since the signs have, haven't started, is there still time left? We look around our world. And we cannot help but think that with everything going on, the signs are there for the end of the world. We don't know when it will happen, but we do have a promise from Jesus. The promise is that even though heaven and earth will pass away, his words will not. Jesus will see us through everything that will happen, through all of the scary times, through the wars and rumors of wars, through the riots and famines, through it all, he will be present with us. But his presence among us will be different than it was for the disciples and for when he returns. Jesus' bodily presence among the disciples was both comforting and confusing. It was comforting for the disciples to have their teacher and leader ever present with them to guide them through the mission of sharing God's love. But it was also very confusing because he seemed like many of the other teachers and leaders of the time that were working to free the Jews from the Romans. And so the, the disciples sometimes had expectations of Jesus that he had no intention of fulfilling. Expectations that he will raise a mighty army in this world and take over the world. But Jesus taught that we are not called to respond to violence with violence. We are not called to take what we want. We are called in the days of suffering to keep awake and wait for our Lord and Savior to return to us in the clouds descending. There will come a day when Jesus makes everything right. He began this work with his death on the cross, humbly and obediently accepting a punishment he did not deserve on our behalf. He did it so that as the world passes away, he could bring us into the new heaven and the new earth. So let us anxiously await the coming of our Lord, preparing ourselves, practicing our faith in action, keeping awake and alert for the signs of his coming. Let us also not put too much trust in our own knowledge, but instead share the good news that Christ has come to set us free from the horrors of this world and to usher in the next. Amen.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change. For those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know, and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Straighten our crooked paths, O God. The day of Christ's coming draws near. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Pray through us now, Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, word made flesh, making all things new. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit, dissolving every chain of sin that binds us, rebuking every power that enslaves, enslaves purifying our hearts, challenging every action not moved by love, and, settling, and setting all creation free. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit. We know the end that lies before us and all things. The elemental powers of this universe shall be burned away.
the heavens vaporized, the earth and all our doings exposed for all to see. We know the end, and we tremble. We also know your promise, out of fire to recreate, out of chaos to reorder, out of such destruction to renew. We know your promise, and we rejoice. We rejoice for you are with us, coming to us in flesh long ago, coming into this world through your church in the power of the Spirit, and coming again to complete what you have begun. That on that day, when all things are recreated, and on these days as we await for the fullness to come, the world may see and know in us the love that moves the universe to its true end in new beginning, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 